All right, my beautiful people. Today we're talking about this, the Sony ZV-1 and my experience with this camera. I've been shooting with this camera for a couple of months now and most recently I was daily vlogging with this camera for the last like two and a half months making videos mounting at different places using it for different angles and just to tell my story in my vlogs so I want to talk a little bit about my experience using the ZV-1 and why I think this is a great camera if you're looking to get one first thing I want to talk about is the flip screen. It's so nice to have a flip screen on a camera, especially coming from Sony cameras that don't have flip screens. The older higher end Sony cameras didn't have flip screens. And it's just nice to have something that you can just point at yourself and see yourself and be able to frame yourself. It's not the biggest screen or the nicest looking screen, but it is good enough to get you framed up and see if you're in focus and see if there's anybody behind you being weird or trying to rob you or something while you're vlogging out on the street. The battery on this camera is small. Small. the camera itself is small so you can't really expect a big battery life out of a camera like this but you can pick up some extra batteries on Amazon for a pretty good price and you'll be set for the day charge them up take them with you and you'll be pretty good with the small batteries from the ZV-1 the lens on this camera is a 24 to 70 now I know some people say that 24 is not wide enough to vlog with I personally think it is wide enough to vlog with and especially if you're stretching your arm out a little or setting it down somewhere to get a shot or whatever it is it's wide enough 24 millimeters is wide enough for me obviously it'd be nicer to have a wider focal length but that's what you get on the camera the 24 to 70 and that's what i've been using and i don't think i have an issue with it it's nothing that i would consider unusable definitely usable at 24 to 70 and you can punch in at 70 millimeters and get some really nice shots as well usually when i'm shooting b-roll and stuff i'm punched in at 70 sometimes wide 24 in between it i think it's great the lens does start off at 1.8 at 24 millimeters and then once you get to like 26 millimeters I believe it goes up to 2.8 all the way to 70 millimeters it's a 2.8 either way at 2.8 is still great still looks great still gives you nice depth of field and enough light to make your footage look good but if you don't want to be at 2.8 all the way through the 70 millimeters you can use the defocus button at the front of this camera which will keep your lens at 1.8 all the way through to 70 millimeters it's called the defocus button or the bokeh button some people call it but it's designed to when you're vlogging or pointing at something it keeps the subject in focus and blurs the background out and at 1.8 you're gonna get the most background blur it locks the aperture in at 1.8 all through the range from 24 to 70 millimeters which I use a lot another awesome awesome tool that this camera has that not even some of the higher-end cameras don't even have this in 2022 and that is the internal ND filter on this camera it is not the strongest internal ND but it helps a lot when you're out in bright daylight situations you don't have to carry extra filters or anything like that it's already in the camera you turn it on and it does the job it gets the job done for when you're out and it helps get your make your footage look better keep your shutter speed lower and closer to that 180 degree rule to get more cinematic looking footage and like I said a lot of cameras that are two thousand three thousand dollars don't even have this at least the Sony ones don't have internal ND which I don't understand why they should a lot of those cameras should you know you got this little sony zv1 it's got internal on d which is a big plus for me another thing about this camera and which is a point and shoot and i say point and shoot because in my opinion it's more than that but it is a really easy camera to use and it's quick to use all you have to do is open up that screen and you're ready to go press record and you can catch the moment or whatever you're doing that fast and you're done close it up and the camera turns off and you're done like Got the moment, put it away, put it in your pocket, go. Now you might notice the little dead cat, rabbit, whatever you wanna call it on top of here. It's the microphone. The microphone itself is right here and this is the wind muff for the microphone. But talking about the microphone, the microphone sounds pretty good for the internal microphone. I don't think it's bad. Um, it beats having a big old mic on top of this mounted on there and it gets pretty much defeats the purpose of the small form factor and not carrying as many things with this camera and it sounds good and it's nothing it's nothing that you can't fix in post you do a little EQing put a compressor on there limiter you're good to go it sounds great in my opinion and also you get the little windscreen on here and it's 
part of the cold shoe axis right here. You put it on there and you just slide it on there and it covers your mic up easily like that. And you got a cute little rabbit, cat, whatever on top of your camera. Now you might be saying, well, why would you choose this over like a smartphone that everybody has in their pockets nowadays and you can use to film? True, I currently use a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and this thing even does 8K. It looks amazing, it looks great for a cell phone, but you're never gonna beat the look of a camera. This sensor is a lot bigger than the sensor on your smartphone, whether it be iPhone, Samsung, whatever you use. This camera sensor is always gonna be bigger than that and it's gonna look better just because it's a bigger sensor. And with the smartphones, you're gonna get nice footage, but in certain situations, it's still gonna look like a cell, like cell phone footage. It's, there's a certain sharpness or look to cell phones that you can tell is cell phone footage. Although I have gotten this camera to look pretty good, but that's just like a different video. We can talk about a different date, but I'm not saying you can't use your cell phone for videos or vlog or anything because I do it all the time. When I forget this thing at home or in the car and I have my phone and I wanna get some footage, I use my cell phone and it still always works out. It looks good too. It's nothing that's gonna be so bad that you're not gonna be able to use in your video. Another thing in this camera that I think is it's a super underrated feature that a lot of people maybe use or don't use, I don't know, but I think it's not talked about a lot is picture profiles in this camera. You're not gonna get that in the smartphone and you only get that in higher end cameras. So you get picture profiles like S-Log, S-Log 3 and HLG. I use HLG and you might say, well HLG 2 is probably not recommended to be able to use on this camera, but I have found that it doesn't look bad. HLG works great on this sensor and I use that on my Sony cameras, I use that on all my projects. HLG is a picture profile that I use for a lot of my projects and it looks great on here and I can match footage from this camera to more professional cameras and you probably won't even notice to be honest. So picture profiles is a great thing in this camera that is literally a professional high-end camera feature. This camera is designed for a certain person or use in mind and that is vlogging and content creators. But personally, I think it's a lot more than that. It's not just a vlogging camera. It's not just a content creation camera. You can get some really good looking footage out of this Sony ZV-1. Your client or whoever you're making a video for, or even on YouTube, people probably won't even know. They'll just be like, oh wow, that looks good. Because at the end of the day, if you know what you're doing and you know how to use the camera and set it up right and lighting is good, nobody's gonna notice that it's a point and shoot camera. So I think it's more than a point and shoot camera and it's more than a vlogging camera. I wouldn't have trouble using this in a professional scenario where maybe I needed an extra angle or something and set it up and put this thing to work, I wouldn't be scared to use it, to be honest. I think it would work out fine. The eye autofocus on this camera makes it great for vlogging, so that's what I'm saying. One of the things that this camera was designed for was for vlogging, which they made that eye autofocus like razor sharp. It, it, it catches your eye. It's pretty accurate and it's really good. You point this thing at, your, at yourself and it's catching your eye and you're in focus. You don't really have to be worried about being out of focus or anything like that because it's that damn good. Steady shot and active shot is another feature in this. It's internal stabilization. The steady shot works pretty good. I always have it on on my regular um, vlogging mode and then I have active steady shot for b-roll which usually I'm gonna be behind the camera so it crops in a little bit and it does get rid of the 24 millimeter wideness of the lens. So when I shoot b-roll at 60 frames I'm usually behind the camera and I'm shooting so I don't mind the crop. I can back up a little or whatever and it looks super steady. It works great. Honestly, this active steady shot is, is pretty awesome and I use it all the time as well. I have two presets on this camera on the memory recall. Memory recall one is 4K at 24 frames and in shutter priority at 1 50th of a shutter and that's for vlogging. Usually when I have it set up and I'm vlogging myself doing my thing, when I want to get some b-roll, I go to a memory recall number two and I have that set up to 60 frames per second at 1080p shutter priority mode as well at 1 25th of a second with active stabilization on. I just switch over to that when I want to get some b-roll, get the shots I want, get the b-roll I want, and then switch back over to the memory recall one, which is my vlogging mode. One of the main things that I don't like from this camera is the zoom. That thing is pretty loud, especially when you're recording, and if you zoom in, Zooming in and out with this camera is pretty loud and the microphone picks it up pretty loud. So sometimes when I'm shooting, I'll like be filming and then if I wanna say something, I'll wait to zoom out and start talking again or zoom in and start talking again because you'll hear that over your audio. You just have to keep that in mind 
it is what it is. It sucks, but it is what it is. But it's not a deal breaker for me to not use this camera on a daily basis. So in conclusion, I think this camera in 2022 is still a great buy, is still a great camera. I don't think I've heard any rumors of this being updated soon or something new coming out. If not, I mean, maybe wait, but as of right now, I think this is still a great camera. It's still something cool to pick up. It's a great on the go. It's great for vlogging, it's great for B-roll, it's great for your kids, it's great for anything, honestly. Um, the only thing you can't change the lens, but when you buy this, you kind of know what you're gonna do with it. It's not one of those cameras that you buy and expect AK or anything out of it. And you know, like I always say, remember, it always comes down to purpose and story for your videos. At the end of the day, if it's entertaining, I don't care if you shot on the potato. If it's entertaining, it's entertaining. Doesn't matter. Story and purpose and having fun beats any camera any quality, any megapixels, whatever you're doing, it beats it every time. So at the end of the day, Sony CV-1 is a win for me in 2022. If you wanna pick one up, there's a link down below. You can check it out. And if you wanna check out my vlog, where I've been daily vlogging and weekly vlog vlogging with this and look at some of the footage, which I shoot 90% of my videos with on there. I'll link a link down below for that too so you can check it out. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you get something out of it. And hopefully you pick up a Sony ZV-1 and start creating memories and start making cool stories and videos and things on YouTube. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.